Welcome once again to The Breakfast. Uh, just uh, about 30 minutes gone past 7 a.m. this morning. And uh, we're going to be taking you back in history now. I'm telling you some stuff that happened today. It is one of the uh, funniest att coup attempts that I've heard of. And it happened in Venezuela in 1992. Um, it was actually meant to take place sometime in 1991 in late December. But uh, the perpetrators of this school decided, oh, let's move it a little further. And eventually happened today in 1992 in um, uh, Venezuela. President then, Carlos Andres Perez, uh, was, of course, um, the, the one who suffered these uh, incidents. And, um, you know, the funny part for me is that it happened three times. Um, of course, the first one was attempted by Hugo Chavez, who eventually became president in 1998. But it initially, okay, like I said, it was initially planned for um, December 1991. Chavez had the loyalty at that time of about 10% of the Venezuelan military and then had attempted to um, move into Caracas and seize key military installations and communications and the presidential palace and all that was necessary. But it failed. Um, it also, one of the reasons it also failed was because the leader of the military back then um, was assigned and his role in the coup back then was to capture President Perez when he landed back in Venezuela for, you know, at the airport. But he changed his mind halfway through the coup because he learned of the person who was meant to take over from Perez after he was killed. And so he, you know, had to backtrack and, and you know, that was the first time that the coup failed. Later on that day, um, about maybe a couple of hours later, the head of the military, Admi Admiral, okay, not, the, not the head of the military now, um, a guy called Miguel Rodriguez Torres was also... Um, um, also was you know one of the people who attempted once again to kill President Perez, um, but also failed. The president apparently had found out about the coup, uh, the coup rather, and escaped. He drove at night without his headlights on. Uh, the uh, uh, guy Torres had ordered that they fire at his vehicle, but it also failed. 30 minutes later, once again, this time insurgents attacked the presidential palace um, of um, uh, Paris back then and also tried to capture him and kill him. But that also failed because, once again, the you know, president was aware of these attempts and um, his military fought for him. Um, he had taken over communications installations and told the country what was going on. And, um, you know, his soldiers, you know, stood in for him. But, you know, one funny part of this is one of the leaders of the coup back then, um, was named uh, Caldera, eventually became president in 1993. Um, and when he became president, he then pardoned Hugo Chavez, who was the, the very first person who attempted that coup. Of course, the normal reasons they blame coups on, you know, not just in Africa, even in Venezuela, is on corruption and mismanagement of government and all of that. So they are thrown in all those reasons and um, um, tried to oust the president then. So Caldera eventually became president in 1993, pardoned Hugo Chavez, who was, you know, um, responsible for the very first coup. And then in 1998, Hugo Chavez became president of Venezuela um, through a democratic process. And so um, these two people, and it's, it's funny because normally you would expect that coup plotters would be, um, you know, tried for treason or whatever reason and be assassinated. But they both eventually became president um, later in the, in the game. And for that first president, I was just laughing while you were talking about it because it was a typical case is... If God be for you, who <laughs> can be against you? <laughs> it's hilarious having three coup cool attempts in one day. Wow. Just a couple of hours apart. <laughs> anyway, something else that's quite interesting. You're on it. I'm on it. It's Facebook. Facebook was launched uh, February 4th in the year 2004. It's based in California, the U.S. And uh, on this day in history, a Harvard sophomore named Mark Zuckerberg launched Facebook a social media website he had built in order to connect Harvard students with one another. He, you know, collaborated with his fellow Harvard College schoolmates. Uh, at the end of the day, over a thousand, I mean, he launched this, let's say in the morning, and in about 24 hours, over a thousand people had registered for Facebook, and uh, he quickly grew into like one of the biggest social media companies in history. Facebook is one of the most valuable companies in the world. It has over 2 billion monthly active users. And uh, Facebook had quite some investment. And uh, <clears throat> in May 2006, Facebook hired its first intern and opened to everyone, uh, to everyone who is at least at the age of 13 yeah. and uh, has a valid email address. By the late 2007, Facebook had 
100,000 pages on which companies promoted themselves. And the company announced 500 million users in July 2010. And because of how big Facebook as a platform had become and how it was easy for people to communicate and spread messages, you know, there was talks about Facebook being used to spread fake news and misinformation. So in 2015, uh, Facebook's algorithm was revised in an attempt to filter such false or misleading content such as fake news, stories and hoax. And... Uh, it's now the most downloaded mobile app of the 2010s globally. And we see now that as of January 21, 2021, Alexa Internet ranks Facebook seventh in global internet usage. Uh, they've acquired other social platforms such as uh, WhatsApp, and Instagram, and as yes. well, they make lots of money. I'm talking about billions and billions of Naira from billions of dollars for selling advertisements on social media and mobile applications. Um, I remember when Mark Zuckerberg was also questioned because of uh, Facebook's alleged uh, complicity during the United States elections. Uh, they were accused of selling uh, user information to um, um, Cambridge Analytica, I believe. Um, um, another aspect also, if you remember the movie, The Social Network, um, it tried to expose or well, expose allegations that Mark Zuckerberg and the idea of Facebook wasn't just, you know, solely on him. It was, you know, along with two other or three other of his roommates who uh, claimed that they were cheated out of, you know, the, mm -hmm. you know, the origin, um, start of Facebook. Um, he eventually also, and it's one of the people, one of the people that um, a lot of... Um, I've heard a lot of Nigerians, you know, refer to and say, oh, you know, he's a school, you know, call it dropout uh, because he, you know, dropped out of Harvard, Harvard at that yes. time and eventually focused on building Facebook into what it is today. So imagine something that started simply as a um, site, you know, for Harvard students mm -hmm. to um, um, interact with each other. Mm -hmm. it, I think initially, a couple of months earlier, he had done something called Face Mash or something, something like that. Um, that was meant for Harvard students to vote on the two prettiest girls in on campus. That only lasted for a couple of months, and then it disappeared. And then Facebook came yeah. and blew, you know, totally out of proportion. So congratulations to him. He is one of the richest men in the world. Today. Yes, one Simply of the richest of men in the world. He became the third richest man on earth, uh, worth over a hundred billion dollars. And this was as of August 2020. So yes, that's it today in history, February 4th, 2004. Facebook was officially launched. And of course, uh, in 1992, in uh, Venezuela, uh, President Carlos Andres Perez survived three coup attempts and eventually, of course, ruled till 1993 when he lost um, or he was ousted um, in elections. Good morning to you once again. Stay with us. We are going to be talking now about the Kano State Governor, uh, Abdullahi Ganduje, and his thoughts on stopping cattle from moving across the country in search of food. We'll get into that conversation right next.